In this keyword research tutorial, you are going to learn everything you need to know to actually get started finding untapped and profitable keywords for your business. Now, I'm a big believer in free education and unlike most of these other guys out there, I'm not actually going to sell you anything. In fact, I'm not going to withhold any information. This is going to be a full comprehensive beginner tutorial. So let's get started. Now, good keyword research is going to be the fundamental for your business. Now, it doesn't matter if you're going to uh, use this information to build up your blog, to build up your affiliate blog where you're going to earn money through affiliate commissions or just your website, basically anything. You are going to need good keywords to get in front of the eyes of the customers that will then end up in conversions for your service or product or in your for your affiliate deals and so on. Now, basically, uh, you're may going to ask yourself, but why? How, how can we actually monetize this? Well, first of all, we do have the general sales, so this would be sales for your own service or product or some digital products for example but this could be also stuff like affiliate commissions there are plenty of affiliate programs out there where you're going to earn upwards of $200 for each sign up and so on so this can actually be quite a significant income source and then secondly you can actually also basically monetize your blog or website through ads and through advertising you can see an overview of this video right here and I can assure you guys that if you're going to watch this step-by-step -step tutorial, you're going to know everything you need to know about doing keyword research. Now, basically to get started, we will have to go through the search intents. Now, basically when doing keyword research, it is important to understand the psychology behind different kind of search inquiries because basically at its core, keywords are just search inquiries where people need help about all sorts of different stuff. So let's for example say that we're going to put in something like YouTube, okay? Now this would be what we call a navigational keyword because as for this keyword, the sole purpose of this is going to be to get to the YouTube homepage and to actually get to that page and nothing else. Now we're going to talk about all of the different kind of ways to actually monetize these keywords later on, but basically one thing which I want to get out of the way right now, navigation, navigational keywords aren't going to be good for advertising because if someone is going to look for YouTube right here, they most of the time don't want to see any other websites that are going to have different information than just the plain YouTube homepage. Now, some other example would be Wix versus Squarespace, okay? Now, these are both website builders. And as you can see right here, um, basically we are going to have tons of different blogs uh, who are going to compare both both of, these, uh, both of these website builders side by side. Now these are some uh, in basically commercial posts because right here we do have two different services, two different prov providers, and they're basically going to compare these. And generally people that are going to look for Wix versus Squarespace are actually in the market of buying either of these services, which is important to know for later on. Now, let's now go over all of the other search intents. Basically, we already covered navigational ones. Navigational are just keywords that uh, where the user wants to find a specific page, site or physical location, and we actually don't want to target these. Now, as for informational, now these are going to be search uh, inquiries where the user wants to find an answer to a specific question. Now, usually these informational uh, search intents are going to have a rather high search volume because a lot of people are going to have the same problems. And now generally these searches often begin with how, what, where, when, why, who, top 10 and so on. Now, some examples would be what's a good car, how to tie a tie, what is, I don't know, climate change, who is the first person on the moon and so on. Now, generally in terms of monetizing, this isn't, I'm sorry, this isn't actually going to be ideal. However, we're going to get into that later on. You can still monetize these keywords and these are super good for other reasons, which I'm going to show later on. Now, then the third keyword would be commercial keywords. Let me actually uh, activate the laser po pointer. Now, commercial keywords are also called commercial investigation keywords because usually these keywords are going to compare and investigate brands or services. Some examples would be Ford versus Nissan, but also something like Wix versus Squarespace, uh, which, which we've used right here. Now, these commercial investigation keywords are going to be great to actually compare either your own service or different kind of service providers because you 
can actually uh, quite easily um, convert these people, these visitors, to paying customers. Now, if you, for example, have a blog on Wix versus uh, Squarespace, people are most of the time either going to choose one of these providers, and I actually do know, I think both Squarespace and as well as Wix are going to pay, I think, $200 for each paying customer. So really, this can be a quite significant amount if, for example, let's say only 10 people per month are going to sign up to either of these services through your link, then still this would be $2,000 per month. Now, obviously Wix versus Squarespace is going to be really hard to get started with and you virtually can't do that if you don't already have an established blog. However, this is just an example. We are going to get into the keyword research later on where, we're go where we are going to find untapped keywords. Now, as for the fourth and also super powerful search intent, this would, pre this would be transactional. Now, these transactional keywords are going to be search inquiries where the user wants to complete an action, most of the time in conversion. So basically something like buy a Ford F-150, uh, buy this service, uh, where to buy that and that, and so on. These transactional keywords are also going to be super profitable to actually target because people that are going to look for buy Ford F-150, for example, are most of the time, basically they already made the buying decision and they only then need the link to actually buy that product and they don't need any convincing to actually get that product like you would have to do on commercial as well as on informational, let's say, blog posts, for example. Okay, now this obviously raises the question, which keywords should you target? Because as at first sight, it obviously would only make sense to actually target commercial and transactional keywords, because these keywords are going to be the main driver of revenue, it seems like. However, this isn't completely true. And to understand why, we will have to cover the marketing journey of a customer. Now, this is going to be just a basic sales funnel uh, through the AIDA principle. Now, basically, we are going to get started with awareness as well as action. And basically, the further down of the funnel, the people basically are going to be more likely to buy a product. Now, our informational posts right here are going to be super top of the funnel. So, you can then basically either monetize these by advertising or also slightly monetize these by doing affiliate marketing because if you for example are going to um, make a blog post about is Squarespace um, a good website builder now this is truly informational however as you can see uh, let's quickly go uh, go go through this blog post now let's quickly go through this website and yeah as you can see right here this person actually also promotes squarespace as an affiliate partner so this means that he is probably also going to make uh, some money on the side with affiliate marketing uh, through this blog post essentially now there are also some other reasons why you should go for these informational keywords now they have a high search volume and therefore you can actually increase your brand awareness which will also result in more ad revenue and so on. Now, basically what I mean by that is that if you, for example, are going to have a blog where you are, let's actually take this blog right here as an example, going to compare different kind of website builders. Now, if you're going to make informational posts for the sole purpose of actually helping people and actually helping and actually helping them making a choice and so on, you can also make money by selling a product. No, we already covered that. However, you're also going to increase your brand awareness. So if you have quite a lot of informational posts around a different kind of topic, people are directly then going to link your website, your blog right here, and for example, this website builder expert blog right here, they're going to link that with the topic. So if someone is going to basically think of what's the best website builder, it is basically more likely that they then are actually going to directly go to website builder expert. And there are also some other benefits to actually doing this because you can actually improve your domain authority and so on, which we're going to get into later on. But for now, it's only important that you should actually also um, go for informational keywords as these are, especially in the beginning, super good to actually target because usually they do have a high search volume and are also fairly easy to get into. Now, on the other side, transactional as well as commercial keywords are more 
the basically bottom of the funnel, so they are action intended, and they are going to be the main drivers of sales and affiliate revenue. Now to actually find these untapped and profitable keywords, we are going to use a tool called SEMrush. Now to be completely transparent, I'm not actually paid by SEMrush to do this video, however I do have an affiliate link which you can use down below, however you don't have to necessarily, however I think my affiliate link actually will give you 7 days for completely free so that you can actually try out the tool. As you can see this is something how it is going to look like so make sure to actually use that link down below if you want to once again no hard worries if you don't now semrush is going to be so powerful because they are going to offer you tons of different features for everything you need you can easily get done seo content marketing market research advertising and so on and as you can see even big companies like tesla samsung la liga fedex and so on actually do use semrush now i will actually just click on start now and i will actually get started with a dummy account as for this video so that you're going to get full insights on how this should actually work. And this is how the SEMrush dashboard is going to look like. On the left, you're going to have an overview of all of the different features and basically this is going to be subdivided in different kind of folders. However, as for this video, we're mainly going to focus on the SEO part as this is usually going to be the thing that you're going to use the most. Now, under keyword research, you are going to have all sorts of different tools and generally you are going to have tons of different tools. However, you aren't going to need all of them, we're only going to cover the important ones. So let's actually get started with the keyword magic tool. This is going to be the main tool for discovering new keywords. So you can basically get started with all sorts of different keywords. So let's for example say that we actually want to promote the Squarespace affiliate program. Now to do that we would just have to put in Squarespace and then we will then actually see all sorts of different keyword suggestions. However, before we can go over that, let me actually help you to understand how this is going to work essentially. Now right here we are going to have the keyword, this should be pretty self-explanatory, and then we are going to have the intent of the search. Now this is going to be the same as we've covered beforehand, so we do have navigational, transactional as well as commercials and also informational ones and then we are going to have the volume this is going to be the average volume uh, i think for like 12 months let's see so yeah for 12 months now one thing which i want to mention right here is that if you have any questions along the way make sure to leave them in the comments down below and i will try to get back to you as soon as possible and also it would really help me if you could give me some feedback down below on what i could improve with these videos and make sure to like now with that being said keyword difficult is basically going to uh, be an indicator on how hard it is going to be to rank for these keywords. Now generally to get started as a beginner you can't aim for high competition keywords as this is as basically it is virtually impossible to rank for these keywords. However, we can also find untapped keywords using the SEMrush tool. Now, as for CPC, this is basically going to be the average price per click that advertisers are going to pay for this keyword and right here we can then see the SERP features now basically when looking for all sorts of different things on Google so let's for example say what's the best phone basically we aren't only going to get website links we're also going to get stuff like this for example which is going to be more questions uh, this is actually in German, I'm sorry, but basically these are going to be SERP features. Sometimes there are also going to be some shopping ads right here or some different kind of basically all sorts of different things like this, a common thing right here and so on. And these are going to be SERP features. Now usually we don't actually want SERP features, however nowadays it is almost impossible to actually not have SERP features on your keywords so we can't actually do a lot about it. However generally as you can see right here basically SERP features are just going to make it harder for your website to actually show up on top. Now right here we can then see when this was last updated and we can actually also go to the manage columns right here and we can then put in uh, all sorts of different other columns. I would actually recommend you to put in trend right here because this is going to be super important to because for example as you can see right here this Squarespace trend is going to be super linear and has pretty steady growth. However let's quickly see if there are some examples for this. Yeah let's take this for example Squarespace rates I don't know why but basically this only has one big spike so we wouldn't actually want to aim for this keyword because this doesn't actually have steady 
see uh, monthly visitors. This only has one big spike and therefore it doesn't actually make sense to target these keywords. Now as for Squarespace, basically all of the keywords are going to be pretty steady, but when basically doing keyword research for other tools, this is really important to keep an eye out. Now, basically, right here on top, we can actually also change the keyword type. So basically, broad match, phrase match, exact match, and related are just going to be options on how hard you want to narrow it down. For example, on broad match, you're going to see quite a lot of keywords that are going to be similar and that are going to, basically, that are going to depend on Squarespace. But the more you're going to get in depth, for example, phrase match, basically, the, the more similar it is going to get with your keyword that you have put in right here. I would actually recommend you to just leave this at broad match and then we can actually also use these filters right here. So let's actually change the keyword difficulty to very easy and let's see that let's see if some keywords are actually worth uh, going for uh, for Squarespace. So this is going to load up. Now one example of a keyword that actually should be pretty good to get into is going to be Shopify versus Wix versus Squarespace. As you can see, this is going to be a commercial keyword, so we can actually earn quite a lot through affiliate commissions. And actually the search volume is going to be a little bit on the low side, 210 isn't going to be exactly what I, I would look for, but generally in the beginning it is going to be hard to directly rank for keywords that are going to have a search volume of 1000 and upwards. So actually if you are a complete beginner this would be a great keyword to look for. So let me actually add this to our list. So to do that just click this on, just click on plus right here and then I'm just going to add a list which is going to state tutorial list YouTube. And then I'm going to save this keyword right here. Now when doing keyword research and when finding different kind of keywords, it is going to be important to actually understand what makes a website rank. So basically what determines if you're ranking. Now there are five big things that you will basically have to consider. The first one being the quality and relevance of your content. Now basically high quality relevant content is paramount. Now this just means that providing helpful information that actually answers the search information and the search queries of your target audience is going to be the key for all of your websites, for all of your blog posts and for all of your content. Now your content should be well researched, engaging and offer value to the readers. It is super important to actually help the readers out and to not just waste their time. And basically the second thing is going to be keywords and SEO optimization. Now you can use tools like SEMrush to actually find profitable keywords. However, you will actually also have to place your keywords strategically uh, in your titles, in your headings, in your text, in your meta descriptions and so on. However, it is actually important to avoid just plain keywords keyword stuffing and you will actually have to maintain a natural language because once again the quality and the relevance of your content is crucial. Now the third thing is going to be backlinks. Now basically backlinks are just uh, other websites referring to your websites. Now the number and quality of your backlinks is basically a significant indicator of its authority and therefore high quality backlinks from reputable and relevant sites can significantly boost your ranking. Now backlinks are so important because they basically kind of act like a vote of confidence from one website to another and therefore the more high quality backlinks a website has, the more reputable it appears to search engines like Google and so on. Now, the fourth thing is going to be the overall user experience and site structure. Because as you can see right here, let's actually take this uh, blog post right here as an example. As you can see, they actually do have a pretty good site structure. They do have an overview on the left and also their blog overall looks pretty good. There are a lot of great images. They basically, they compare everything super simple and so on. So this site structure is really good and therefore Google will actually, basically they will reward this because people are going to continue uh, staying on the site just because the site structure is so good. And this once again does come to the quality and relevance of your content and to the user satisfaction. And I can't stress enough about this, user satisfaction is going to be one of the most important things when building up your blog or your website. Now, the fourth thing are going to be the overall engagement metrics. Now, basically search engines consider engagement metrics like bounce rate, time on site, click-through rate. Basically, these metrics are going to indicate 
relates to them, how relevant and how valuable users are going to find your content. And high engagement typically leads to better rankings because Google obviously wants to um, show the best results to the user and therefore they are actually going to reward if your website is going to help the overall user. Now, we already covered the first keyword research method, which would be using this keyword magic tool right here. However, let's actually quickly go into the link building aspect of SEMrush. As you can see right here, basically um, SEMrush is going to allow you to have a backlink analytics. So we can just actually use this website right here as an example. So I will just copy that and analyze that. And now basically SEMrush is going to analyze everything. And we are basically going to see an overview. Obviously you would have to put your, your own website right here. But basically, as you can see, this website has 20.2 thousand uh, referrals domains, over 260,000 backlinks and over 400,000 monthly visits and so on. Now you can also see an in-depth and en uh, engagement overview basically. You can see new and lost backlinks. You can see the top anchors of this. You can basically see all of the link attributes, the top countries and so on. And now basically this is going to be super valuable for your own website because you can see everything accordingly and basically you can see all of the informations that you will need to know. You can also see an overall network graph, which is going to basically uh, give you an overview of the most relevant domains representing your niche. In this case, this would be Apple, Amazon and so on. You can then also go in depth into backlinks and you can actually just basically go in depth into all of these sections right here on top. This should be pretty self-explanatory. However, once again, if you have any questions, make sure to leave them in the comments down below and I will try to get back to you as soon as possible. Now you can actually also use SEMrush to directly build up your backlinks using this link building tool right here. So if you want to do that, you can basically just go through the process and this should actually build backlinks and therefore could actually improve your overall ranking of your website. Now, basically, um, let's head over to the domain overview. And once again, this is going to be for this websitebuilderexpert.com thing. And we're going to now get an in-depth uh, in review of where this basically is going to get all of the views from, uh, what the top organic keywords are going to be, the organic positions, the keywords by intent. As you can see, most of these keywords are actually going to be informational. Only very few are going to be transactional. And then basically they're also going to list their main organic competitors. So let's actually open them um, on a new tab and we can see, okay, this is also going to be a hosting advice uh, blog then tool tester is basically also a blog, I guess, that is going to, yeah, as you can see right here, basically we, they have a, a Squarespace review as well as a Squarespace tutorial. So once again, this is just going to be an overview of the Squarespace, Squarespace builder. And one thing which I would like to highlight is that you should actually analyze your competitors. So if you want to build up and blog in the, let's say just tool testing niche, in the website building niche, then you should actually look at your competitors and you should look at the overall basically structure of their website to basically replicate that what's already working and as you can see right here uh, as for the website uh, as for the tool tester niche it is actually pretty common to have an overview on the left to have uh, nice pictures to have videos even and so on so it is really important to actually analyze that now when heading back to SEMrush basically this uh, domain overview feature is going to be super powerful for your own domain. You can also see the worldwide overview. Now you can also basically do um, research with this so you can analyze all of your competitors. Now one other super powerful way to actually do keyword research is using this keyword gap tool right here. And basically with this keyword gap tool, you will have to first of all put in your own website and then you will have to add the website of some competitors to you. So I will actually just add these competitors right here. Um, you can actually also go more in depth with this by simply using the domain overview a tool which we've just discussed. But I will just actually use these three competitors. 
Then I'm going to click on compare and this is basically going to analyze all of the indexed keywords for each of these competitors and then they're basically going to give us an overview of that right here. And you can actually use this to find keywords where all of your competitors are ranking but only you not and this is super powerful because if your competitors are ranking you will most likely want to also go for that keyword as they are already using that and most likely already go already are going to get good traffic with this so to do that head over to the all keyword details right here and then click on missing right here and as you can see, now we are going to get tons of different keywords where all of our competitors are already ranking in, but only, only us not essentially. And one example for this would be the Namecheap website builder. I think it would actually be a pretty good idea for this um, website builder expert blog right here to go for Namecheap website builder as the trend is pretty steady I guess they had a big, uh, big spike uh, 12 months ago but other than that it's pretty steady the keyword difficulty is going to be possible and um, now as this uh, website where the expert blog is already established it is going to be easier to go for these high keyword difficulty search terms however for beginners it wouldn't actually make sense to go for this keyword as you will basically not you can't rank for this essentially if you are new and if you don't already have some backlinks and so on however by clicking twice on kd right here this is basically going to show all of the keywords that have a fairly low di keyword difficulty now as you can see the volume also isn't going to be too good for these keywords but still you will be you can basically find a middle path to this for example something like dreamhost cloudflare has a volume of 590 which is actually pretty good to get started with. Now once you've found the right keywords and once you've actually already let's say posted your first blog and so on it you aren't actually done yet you will actually have to use these on page and tag SEO tools right here so let's actually open these so that you can actually optimize and improve all of your rankings now as you can see if you're going to uh, open up the site audit feature right here let's say actually that we are going to uh, copy this link right here onto this this is basically going to um, open up an analysis on all of the different uh, basically settings that you can actually improve. Now, as this is going to be a little bit more advanced, I won't actually do that. However, for your own website, I would actually highly encourage you to cover this site audit feature right here, as this is going to run an SEO analysis to uncover the highest priority technical issues with your blog. This is basically going to involve stuff like how fast your website is going to load up and so on. Now, as for the other tools, uh, SEO content template is actually also super, uh, super powerful. Let's say that we are going to put in Squarespace versus Wix. And now basically this is going to, uh, with an AI, create content and create basically different kind of opportunities that you can use for your blog post. And as you can see now we are actually going to get an overview on how to rank for these keywords. Now there are some key recommendations that SEMrush is going to give you. Uh, you will basically have to Im uh, in involve these uh, semantically related words as well as you will have to try to acquire backlinks from these domains and so on. However, more importantly, once you've actually built up your blog, you can use this on-page SEO checker right here to further improve all of your blogs. So let's just rerun this campaign right here. And now basically, uh, this is going to analyze the Website Builder Expert blog. And the, basically, they are going to try to find new backlink, uh, backlink ideas, find new strategy ideas, new content ideas, and so on. Now, as you can see right here, now SEMrush basically states that this blog has the potential to reach 1.8 million viewers um, users per month i guess now this isn't going to be 100 percent accurate however still this is going to give you quite a lot uh, quite a lot uh, great ideas on what you could do for example you could fix some keyword cannibalization on this uh, website blog right here and generally they are just going to analyze and optimize all of your existing blog posts and they're going to find new ideas on how to further improve them so that they are going to rank higher on search essentially. Now that's it for this video. Thank you for watching. As always make sure to like and subscribe if you found this video helpful and I will see you in the next one.